Howdy folks and welcome out to The Claim. Today I'm going to be evaluating a new dry washer developed by Mike Zapp in Phoenix, Arizona. It's a great prospecting tool. It's very lightweight, easy to, portable to take around, made out of redwood finish. So let's go ahead and unpack this thing and I'll show you what it's all about. Okay, so first of all, we're just going to set it here onto the ground. And the thing, first thing we're going to do is undo the parachute cord, which is actually part of the puffer to make it work. So we're going to unclip this from the handle. Okay, and get that out of the way. Okay, and then we're going to lay the box unit flat like this. Okay, so we can work on it. Now it has these corresponding eye bolts that you see down here. So what we're going to do is simply remove these and unscrew them. We got the eye bolts already removed. There's four of them all together. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the box and we're going to simply just tip it straight up like this. Okay, then we're going to take the inner leg and we're going to bring it all the way up. Okay, and then we're going to put one of the eye bolts, I'm going to bring it around the hasp here, and we're going to bring it right up into here, put this little deal in, into the hole, and insert it right into the corresponding hole right here too as well. So this whole thing just fits right in there. Got to get it just right. And then all you do is just go ahead and screw it in. Now you do that to all four legs, all right? And so he's made this so it's real super simple. There's not a whole lot to do except for just running the screws in here. And then he's also got a little backstop so you can only run it in so far, all right? So we'll go ahead and do that to the other side as well. We'll go ahead and just set it up, put the bolt in here, and we'll run that in. Okay, now that we got these bolts in, we'll go ahead and put in the other ones. And it goes into this leg here, fits right into this hole. So we just slide it right in and we just screw it in. Real simple and easy. And we'll do the same thing for the other side as well. So we'll get it in so far, it's got a little stop lock on it so we can only screw it in so far. We'll go ahead and do the same thing for the other side. And it literally, guys, this thing literally goes together just a matter of seconds, man. It's that easy, okay? So once we get this thing set up, we're ready to tip this guy up. And so here we go, just like this. And we can just set it on the ground and there you are. Now, what's really cool about this is that you notice the bolts back here, back here kind of stick out a little bit. Well, now you can move the legs out a little bit to render a little bit more stability in the platform here. So now you have a nice solid uh, machine ready to go. And so let me just kind of spin it around here so you can get kind of a better idea of what it looks like. Here's the uh, Grizzly screen right here. Okay, and the, and the screen on it is three eighths. Okay, and so this is where you're going to dump the dirt into the hopper. All right, so we'll get into more closer details here in just a moment. Okay, so the last feature is this parachute cord that has these two clips on it. Okay, well, we take either side and we just clip it onto the bottom here. Okay, so now this is going to run the puffer. Now, I also want to point out you notice this parachute cord that's sitting right here coming up to the uh, upper part of the uh, of the dry washer. This is to keep the, the bellows here from dropping and hyperextending. So therefore it keeps it from tearing. So this is kind of an actual stop. So now we're ready to go because now this cord here allows us to lift the bellows up and down to pump the air. Isn't that cool? So let's talk about the uh, craftsmanship. Now Mike personally makes all these dry washers by hand. So these are custom made, made out of redwood. And what I like about the redwood finish is that it really never rots and it really kind of never cracks either. It does, it does hold up really well for the system. Of course, here's his website down here if you want to get a hold of him. So let's go ahead and kind of pan around here and show you the upper hopper box here and what it all looks like. So he has this square frame all the way around that's, uh, that's you know screwed in together with wood screws. And then we come all the way over here to the Grizzly, and you can see the Grizzly, and uh, it's a 3 8 inch screen, and then we have some aluminum skirting along the side here so the rocks don't beat up the wood. So you dump the material in here, and of course it all flows off to the side, all, this, all the coarse material into the header, and the rest of it drops into the hopper, where then it falls onto the riffle board. Now let me show you the underside here. It's got a metal plate here to hold all the material in. It's got a flow adjustable door here, so all the material flows out onto the riffles. And it's got this little rubber plate right here as well. So what happens is that as the material flows out, it hits this rubber plate and it kind of fans out so it lands onto the riffle more effectively. So it's not all piled in the middle here. It kind of gets to a broader coverage of the flow as it's going down the riffle board. The riffle board is made out of redwood, just like the upper hopper, and it has four corresponding riffles. 
and it also has a fabric material down here below as the air flows up through the billows, okay? And if you look real closely, you can see that everything is sealed by silicone. So we have amongst the riffles here, a silicone dead spot, and that is key to where the gold is gonna trap on these individual riffles. Now, uh, Mike has done really extensive research on how big to make these riffles. He's experimented so he has the optimum height to go with it so it traps the most gold. And so he's done a really good job with that. And of course, we'll show you this in action. So now let me show you what's inside here. Now, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these, this hasp that's right here. There's one on each side and I'm just gonna release it. Okay, real super simple. And there's one on the other side correspondingly and I'm just gonna release it, okay? And so now the riffle is just gonna pop right out and it just lifts right out like so. And then we have on the underside, we have this nice rubber uh, seal that's all the way around. And correspondingly, there's also a rubber seal on the underside of this. So it makes a really tight closure so you don't leak out any air. So all the air flows through the canvas bottom. And you can see the nice staple job that he's done here too. That's really cool as well. And so now you can see the billows on the inside here. Now this is a special uh, PVC uh, uh, fabric material that's it's made out of and it does a really good job and it's extremely durable too which is great because you're going to be doing a lot of movement with this so this puffer box moves up and down this billows okay like so and then it has a corresponding piece of rubber flap here to allow the air to flow inside all right so this is how it works it's really super simple now let me explain how the bellows works here. It's really quite simple. We have this parachute cord hooked to the bottom of the bellow box down here. And all you have to do is just flip it with your wrist. It's this light and easy. So if you can open up a can of beer or operate a TV remote, you can easily operate this all day long because this is all it takes. Now let's say for instance, if you're gonna operate this billows more and it's dusty and windy and all that, well, you can stretch this cord out and take it out even further and go like this. So now you're away from all the dust. Okay, so you can accommodate for your needs. Now, before we take this out in the field and show you in action, I've got one more thing I wanna show you about this dry washer. When you're all finished using the dry washer, instead of putting it out in the shed or the garage, bring it into the living room. Hey, Mike's craftsmanship is so good that this could be part of the furnishings. And can you imagine what a conversation piece this will make when the guests come over? Folks, I can't tell you how versatile this product really is. In terms of prospecting, it's really great. You can literally keep this in the trunk of your car. And so when you're out driving around, you know, you find a little place that you want to check out. Hey, you can grab this. You got a little simple bucket with a shovel and a few other little goodies. And you can take with you and you can hike in and check out the ground that you're interested in. And so that's what we're going to do today. I'm actually just off the highway here. And this is about as far in as I want to drive the truck. And there's this wash down this over direction. And I want to go check it out and see if there's any gold. So let's go over there and check it out. Okay, well, here we go. This looks like a pretty interesting wash through here, folks. Yeah, we'll kind of walk along and see if we can find ourselves a good spot here. Well, hey, this looks like a pretty good spot right here. Wow, yeah, this looks good. I'm seeing a lot of black sand through here. I got a little bit of red. So I think what we'll do is we'll move these rocks out of the way and then we'll get down onto the, onto the caliche bedrock and uh, see if there's any gold down here. So we'll go ahead and get this dry washer set up. Okay, we'll go ahead and set it up here, try to get it somewhat level so all the legs are touching the ground. There we are, that's pretty close. And we're ready to go, so let's go ahead and clean out all this rock and scoop it up, and then we can feed it into the hopper. All right, so we got our hole dug out. We got probably about two buckets worth, so I got some in the bucket over here, and we got another little pile here of really reddish material mixed with black sand, so I'm hoping we'll find some gold. So all we have to do is simply just take the bucket and pour it right into the hopper here. And we just kind of scrape it around, remove all the bigger rocks, dump it in. So this will hold about almost a, a half a five gallon bucket pretty easily. So we can really load it up and get some material in here. Okay, a little bit more. How about that, folks? I'm almost got a five gallon bucket's worth in here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and loosen the gate a little bit so we can get the material to flow onto the riffles. And then we'll go ahead and just all you have to do, like I say, flick of the wrist here, 
to get the action going. And then sometimes you gotta just kinda adjust it a little bit to get a little more flow. It takes a little bit of practice. So you get the, just the type of material is always a little different. There we go, getting about the right speed of material. Now it just takes a little bit of practice, but as you can see, now we got it going. And all I'm doing is just simply just jerking the string back and up and down, running it. And this is a really simple, easy, quick way to run the machine. So I'm hardly lifting my hand up at all to run this uh, billows. And it's just puffing right along, just about what you want. And uh, yeah, we'll just crack it open a little bit more. All right, so we'll just go ahead and fill it up with a little more dirt. Uh, shake it around, get all the smaller stuff through the Grizzly here. Now, I just want to remind you that this is not really production. We're prospecting here. We're testing some ground. We're not really running a lot of material because we want to test to see if there really is gold so that way we can bring in a bigger system to actually process more volume in the future. All right, so now all we do is just grab our parachute cord and we'll open the gate a little bit here, get a little bit flowing in, and we're ready to continue on puffing. Pretty sweet, look at that thing go. Woohoo! We're just puffing right along, making a little adjustment here to the gate, and off we go. It's that simple. Especially when you're out prospecting, you need stuff that's really simple because you want to keep it as simple as possible. And let's say, for instance, it's a little dusty and I want to get away from it, I can just take my power, or I can take my parachute cord and simply pull it out here so I can actually get away from it a little bit more. Plus I can also look down here and see how we're doing. And that's slick, huh? And of course, depending on how fast you run these bellows is dependent on what kind of material you're running. Right now we're kind of running string gravel so it moves rather quickly. So you gotta give it a really good puff. If you're running really super gooey clay, sometimes you may have to slow it down a little bit and not puff so much. So you just got to kind of find the right amount of speed and the right amount of puff, so to speak, from the bellows to lift the material over. You obviously don't want to overdo it, you know, but this is about right. Okay, folks, I think we're just about done. You can kind of see here we're uh, running out of material. I think the hopper's empty. So we'll go ahead and take the uh, riffle off and uh, we'll take the whole system back to the truck. Okay, so now we're just folding up the machine. We got it laid down here. I'm just going to undo the last little bolt here, and we're going to just lower the leg down, and we'll secure them in just a moment. Uh, another thing I want to mention that's kind of cool with this is that the billows section of this dry washer actually tucks down, so it actually protects the material here. So it's actually hiding down in between the pieces of the wood, so you don't have to worry about it tearing or anything when you're out moving it around and stuff. So that's about it, and then we're just going to run these bolts through here, tie these legs on, and we are all set to go and get out of here. And just within a few minutes, we got this thing all packed up, and we're ready to head out back to the truck. So we'll go ahead and get it all swished around. We'll do our cut here as we got done stratifying. Stratify a little bit more, get all that gold to settle to the very bottom. As you can see, I'm using a small pan and a small tub. So again, very compact. So if you're out in the field, you don't need a lot of water, don't need a very big pan to, count, uh, to work the concentrates here. Pretty simple. Get down to the black sand here. Yep, getting a little better. Okay, now we're kind of right down on the black sand. There's a couple of larger pebbles. Get out of the way. There's a nice piece of garnet right here. You can see that? Yeah, a nice little chunk of garnet right there. Yep, that's pretty cool. We do have garnets in the uh, material out here. All right, so we'll go ahead and just swish it around. Got a lot of black sand in here. There's some garnets. Okay, and I'm already starting to see some gold show up. There's a little piece right there. You see that right there at the end of my finger? There's one piece. Let's see if we can kind of stretch it out a little bit. 
Yeah, there's some more in there. There's another piece. There's another piece. There's a real fine piece. There's a, oh, there's look at all the little fine pieces over here. Yeah, look at all that. Yep. There you go, folks. So it looks like there's gold in this wash. Look at that. Look at all the fine little pieces of gold. Now, this is a good accomplishment for that little uh, dry washer because it's collecting all these little fine specks. You see that? That's pretty darn good. You know, most dry washers have a hard time recovering this size gold. Look at this. this you just see it all dotted throughout this whole pan there. Pretty good. All righty. We got some gold. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video of this little prospecting puffer that can. And this is really an awesome machine. So I'm going to give you all of uh, Mike's information in the description page so you can reach out to him if you want to get one of these little guys because this is really super great for prospecting. Now, if you like this video, be sure to smash that like button and be sure to hit the little uh, subscribe button and the bell so that way you can get future updates on some of my videos. In the meantime, I wish you the very best in your prospecting adventures. Get out there and find some gold. And we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.